Hello and welcome to this Unreal Engine tutorial series. I'm Thomas M, and today we're going to be talking about action objects and object-driven behavior in Unreal Engine. This concept is at the core of large team development, however, not a lot of people write tutorials over these kinds of things because they're fairly advanced to engineer and take a lot of specific setup for your project, and you really only need to use this pattern on a larger team, so often it's skipped in tutorial land. Uh, this action object pattern is at the core of the gameplay ability system, or GAS, so anyone trying to get a handle on that system, or if you're looking to compartmentalize code for a team project with multiple coders, or a bunch of artists, or if you want to have a large volume of simple player abilities you swap out dynamically throughout your game, or if you really just want to learn how AAA developers structure their code, then this series is for you. I've done a setup tutorial series you'll find on my YouTube channel for the gas. And in trying to teach the next steps the past few months, I've realized it's a better choice to learn this pattern and what it's intended to do before getting into the robust and fully built network-enabled action object system that the gas has to offer. So I'll be mimicking some of what that system does from the client perspective, but this is very, very simplistic just to teach you the pattern in a single player vacuum where we can really control everything ourselves and understand what it means to have an action object. In the GAS, these objects are called Gameplay Abilities, or GAs. I chose to use Action Object as my naming convention just to really keep that distinction in my head. Um, of course, you can call them anything you'd like. I don't recommend calling them Gameplay Abilities just to avoid confusion in case you work with somebody in the future that uses the GAS or you decide to integrate GAS down the road. It's better to just come up with your own names. For this series, we'll be using Blueprint Visual Scripting extensively with some fairly advanced concepts, but we won't be writing anything in C++. For preparation, you should be comfortable using Blueprint classes, enumerations, and interfaces before attempting this series. There are many advantages to doing a pattern like this in C++, and I recommend for any performance-intensive project where you're really looking for optimization to go ahead and build this pattern in C++, if you know C++ and Unreal, you'll know most of these things will carry over directly to how you write your code. You'll have access to a few more shortcuts and optimization functions in C++, but hopefully having this series in Blueprints will be a bit easier for everyone to grasp, and those of you using C++ can just convert things over and integrate in code. So, without further ado, let's dive in and talk a little bit about action objects. So an action object is an object, and it's important to note that it's not an actor, but it's actually a U object, which means it's not instantiated. It doesn't have a transform, it doesn't have our traditional actor-ness. It, it can't exist in our scene, it can't draw anything, it's just an object. So this object holds in it all of the necessary data to complete an action. So for example, a melee attack action has a montage to play and a collider to toggle on and off during the montage to deal damage, right? Every melee attack, regardless of it being on an enemy or a player or a flying guy or whatever, has these same components that execute in the same way. Whether the instruction is from a controller input button or a behavior task, really doesn't matter. Now, if we were doing this in a multiplayer environment, I will note, and especially if this were a PvP game, we would be using targeting actors rather than colliders on the skeleton, how we're going to be doing today. Uh, but this sort of pattern works very similarly at the end of the day, where we'll be turning colliders on and off. You'll actually just spawn an actor that replicates and detects damageable actors in a hit arc in front of the owner actor, right? This, so the pattern itself really plays out the same, just use a little bit different functions for it. So. It stands to reason that every attack you make can go through the same line of code to play a montage, toggle on colliders when needed, and then end when the montage is completed. So we're going to put that code in a base class all on its own. And then when we make melee attacks, they'll simply inherit that behavior and we'll set the montage in a variable. We'll also do a bit of housekeeping so we can override chunks of behavior for special effects involved with different attacks. For example, say you have a charge-up attack that applies a mesh effect to the player character during the charge animation, and then if you haven't canceled it with another action by the time it finishes charging, it cues another animation where you strike and do more stuff like apply knockback force to targets and play visual cues. By building robust dynamic base classes, we're able to create a wide range of behaviors with ha without having to reinvent the wheel every time or put a branch in our code for every attack we want to make. 
If you think about this for the development pipeline, your engineers are able to work on the base class behaviors, your gameplay or technical designers work on specific implementations of those base classes, and nobody trips over each other in the same player character class because there's only three functions in there. It's worth noting that action objects and finite state machines are not mutually exclusive. You can use an FSM to fire action objects directly and hardwire actions as you see necessary. For this series, I focus on dynamically bound input actions, much like you'll often see in gas projects, but putting this activation method in an FSM is fairly trivial. The can activate checks we'll be getting into may not be necessary for an FSM driven pattern, but it can still be useful for randomly activated actions you want to do outside of your FSM to include a tag blocking system. Like say you have an FSM that drives your idle walk run and your jump states, but then you want to have an additional ability whenever you do an attack. You could use this sort of structure to handle just your attacks. That's actually how we're doing it. It's the animation blueprint is an FSM. But there's many other things that you could have fire, like if you have level events fire off, or you have bad guys cue specific behaviors where you like fall off a cliff or something. Um, you can do these sorts of things without having to have that animation always exist on the player. You can just sort of give them an action object and then have them just go do it. So without further ado, uh, we're going to get into the engine in the next video and actually start seeing this stuff happen. So I will see you in the next video.